So you're forming a club? Yeah. And it's based around time travel? Pretty much. Okay, so let me get this straight. You, a Beckman student, managed to crack time travel before literally anyone, anyone else in the world. I guess so. And I'm assuming that's your time machine? Yeah. Can I see it? Okay. It's smaller than I expected. Huh. Are you going to test it out? Nah. Why not? The very fabric of space and time lies in the very essence of this device. As one trip to the past would single-handedly alter every single molecule of the space-time before and after, thereby eliminating the past, present, and future, and not to mention the- Oh, okay, okay. I get it. Okay, even if you had a real machine, the deadline to make a club already passed. And you didn't even turn in your application. But I submitted my application weeks ago. Then why is it sitting right there? I'm, I'm starting to think that you're just making up this whole time travel club just so, you, so just so you can have something put on your resume. I mean, if it was some sort of time travel club, you guys would have at least set up some sort of decent machine. What, what just what just happened? I did it in. But we, did, did, didn't you say that the, the universe was gonna like blow? What's poppin' Patriots? I'm Jacob Dubin. And I'm Serena Doshi. And welcome to the second episode of, of the, the Beckman, Beckman Beat. Beat. Are you excited to be back for another episode? Yeah, how about you? Absolutely. And we've got a great episode ahead, so let's jump into it. But before we do that, we just want to thank you for all of the positive feedback from the last episode. It felt great to hear everything you guys had to say. You know what else is going to be great? Club Rush. Club Rush? Club Rush. Club Rush. Club Rush. Club Rush. Do you think it was canceled? No. It's probably in another wing or something. Maybe they did cancel it. Maybe we should just ask someone. Oh, oh hey, excuse, excuse me. Us. Hey, do you know where Club Rush is? Yeah, it's been relocated. Relocated? Yeah. No it's... time. We gotta go. You go this way, I go that way. Club Rush is? Oh, dang it! And can I at least get a Travi Patty? I'm sorry, we don't sell those anymore. Dang it!
Hey guys, what are you doing here? Oh, hey, um, we were looking for a club rush all day, but we couldn't find it. It's like it's not even happening in person this year. About that, it's online. Club Rush, 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 I want to join a club! Well, you can! I can? Yeah, you can! On October 21st, a virtual Club Rush will be held at bhsclubs.com where you can access a Google Sheet with club information, Zoom links, and sign-up sheets. Does that mean I can meet with club representatives and get to know club members without getting out of bed? Yes, it does! You know, I've always wanted to join one of those cultural clubs and try food from all over the world. Yeah, clubs where you can eat are the best. I really like eating all kinds of food, especially baked goods. Speaking of food, let's take a look at one of the premier bakers at Beckman. My name is Ashwin Huen. I'm a senior at Beckman High School, and I'm an aspiring baker. I actually started baking when my parents divorced. My relationship with my dad was um, failing, I guess you can say. Um, him and I weren't talking that much. I just wanted to find something to channel my sadness, my anger, or my happiness. You know, baking is really consistent. One thing with my home during the divorce was that it was fluctuating all the time. There was um, argument or crying. You know, everything was all over the place. But with baking, you measure out the ingredients, you bake at a certain temperature, you frost it the same way. So baking was just this constant balance that I can turn myself to. As well as baking, I also do a lot of art outside of school and in school. So incorporating art into my cakes is a huge inspiration for me. There's just unlimited freedom that comes with it. Um, if I'm feeling an impressionist kind of vibe, I can do an impressionist painting. If I'm feeling a portrait of someone, I can do a portrait. In terms of flavor, my favorite would be a Chantilly Berry cake, which is my signature cake that I do for most orders. It's really fresh, and I think cakes in general are just so easy to mold into whatever you want. With quarantine, I got to solidify a lot of my recipes that I've been developing. Um, I even got to kickstart more of my business, which you know, kind of hard because we're quarantining and you can't really bake a lot of things to give to people, but it's given me a lot of time to experiment. My family and my friends always get to try all of my desserts, um, whether they taste bad or not. But it's really great to have a supporting um, friend group and family who are willing to give me constructive criticism or, you know, give me compliments. I really want to expand my baking business into a full-on career and I plan to do that by going to hospitality management um, in college and hospitality management would further my skills in managing a restaurant, um, more of that business aspect of baking. I mean with juggling school and outside curriculars um, it is hard to incorporate baking but it is my passion and I do make a point to take a moment and just bake something, even if it's something as simple as cookies or brownies. Most people don't get to follow their passions and turn it into a job that they love. And for me, I really want to be able to open that bakery and share those cakes and desserts to not only my friends and family, but to the community as well. Hey, I brought brownies. You want some? Uh, thanks, but why are you here? Shouldn't you be on the street? Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another episode of Man on the Sea. As always, I'm your host Luke Angstrom and today's episode is all about clubs. So, starting us off, I have the wonderful Carla Camacho, the leader of the Femme Club. Carla, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Luke. Thank you guys so much for having me. And thank you for coming. 
So, let's start this off by addressing the elephant in the room. The stigma that surrounds feminism. Many people think they know what feminism is about, but what really is the message and goal you're trying to get across with your club? So, Luke, feminism is defined as the economic, social, and political equality of the sexes. Our club aims to educate Beckman student body on what feminism really is and other feminist issues as well as other social issues um, because a lot of people tend to think that feminism only fights for women when really it examines how gender affects everyone and um, defines our experiences and interacts with other parts of our social identity. Oh, so you mentioned that the Fem Club also fights for other causes. Would you mind elaborating on that? So this semester we're planning on doing some joint events with other clubs so that we can address other social issues. I mean, of course, we're in an, we're in an election year, so we need to talk about that a lot as well. Um, and we're also going to talk about um, how other um, parts of our society do need, some, do need to have some work done. Carla, thank you so much for coming here and informing us about the Femme Club. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was a pleasure. And on to our next guest. So now we have our next guest, the wonderful Pierce Johnson. Pierce Johnson, how are you doing today? And would you mind telling us about your club? I'm good, and my club is Autoimmune Invincible, and it's about spreading awareness for the different types of autoimmune diseases. Oh, so autoimmune diseases, what does that mean, and what kind of diseases specifically are we talking about? Autoimmune diseases are diseases in which the body attacks itself in the healthy blood cells, and they're chronic, which means that they have no cure. And we're not necessarily spreading it awareness for one autoimmune disease, we're trying to spread awareness for all. Oh, that's really nice. So, you're the host of, or not the host, but the leader of the Autoimmune Invincible Club. What specifically inspires you to run this club? Is it, do you have a personal experience with an autoimmune disease or maybe someone close to you? I have an autoimmune disease called Crohn's disease and I fell into a really deep hole and I founded the club as well as the vice president because he has an autoimmune disease as well. We founded it together because we wanted to let others with autoimmune diseases know that they're not alone. Oh wow, so I didn't know that autoimmune diseases are this common. So in terms of spreading awareness for um, your club, are you planning on working with any other organizations or other schools perhaps? We do plan to work with the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation and the Lupus Foundation of America and many more and we have extended our board nationwide instead of just Beckman. That's actually really great that you're working with other organizations and I wish you best of luck. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for coming. On to our next leader, the leader of the esports team. So last but certainly not least, we are joined by Keone Ho, the leader of the esports team. Keone, how are you doing tonight? Pretty good, Luke. How are you doing? And I'm doing great. So Keone, you're the leader of the esports team. What is your goal and aspirations for this year with the esports? Some goals and aspirations for the Beckman esports team is to bring the gamers of Beckman into one community and be able for students to have an opportunity to show off their skills in different tournaments. Oh, so you mentioned tournaments now. Being a gamer myself, I know a thing or two about esports tournaments, and sometimes there's a lot of money involved. Um, are there any plans to participate in any of these tournaments? Yes, we're currently in a tournament hosted by NASF, and we're competing in different types of games like Valorant, Overwatch, and League of Legends. Oh, so you're in tournaments right now, but have you won any tournaments before? We haven't won any yet, but I have a good feeling about this year. <laughs> I wish you guys best of luck, and I'll be staying tuned. And thank you to all the viewers at home for watching this segment of Man on the Seat. My name's Luke Angstrom, but you already knew that. Back to you in the studio. Stay spicy, Hello Patriots. Hello what? <laughs>